Hello all. Welcome to the VoIP Traffic Analysis course on Pentester Academy. Now in this video, we look at VoIP protocol basics. Now what I'd like to mention is the protocols themselves are very complicated and hence I'm going to abstract things out and only talk about details which are relevant to us from a traffic analysis perspective and from a security perspective. Okay, so at a very high level, uh, VoIP communication happens using two different channels. The first channel is dedicated to signaling. So what is signaling? So let's say we have Alice and Bob, again, <laughs> predictable names uh, based on cryptography. And let's say Alice wants to initiate a call with Bob, right? So this means, you know, through some kind of a intermediate server, she's going to send that invite message to Bob. Bob would accept it. The phone start ringing on both sides. Uh, you know, eventually data communication happens, which is the actual voice data. And then finally the call is torn down. So all of this signaling about like, I'd like to start a call. Yes, ringing is happening. Yes, call has been accepted. Let's begin data. And then that entire data channel is separate called the media channel. And then once the call is over, finally we have, you know, the closing connection messages. So this entire signaling system actually happens over a totally different channel in VoIP. And the entire voice data is carried over another channel. Now, what kind of servers are actually available as far as VoIP is concerned? Now, as I mentioned, VoIP is a pretty complicated protocol and there are various different server configurations available. Uh, now, the more common servers, uh, which are kind of defined more as user agent servers, because user agents talk to them directly, are Asterix, uh, you know, 3CX, FreeSwitch, SIP Foundry, couple of them. The PCAP files which we've generated for this course have actually been using Asterix now. Similarly, for clients, many, many options. You have hard phones and soft phones. Some examples of soft phones include Zoiper, Xlite, MicroSIP, etc. Okay, so we talked about signaling, right? The very first channel. Now there are multiple protocols available for signaling. SIP uh, is actually the more popular one, which is what we will be looking at in this course. But apart from that, you also have the H323 protocol suite. It's more of an umbrella of protocols and the older Cisco Skinny, which is pretty much obsolete now, uh, but nevertheless was a signaling protocol. Now SIP, as I mentioned, is what we are going to focus uh, as far as this course is concerned. Now interestingly, SIP is a text-based protocol and pretty much mimics how HTTP works. So you will actually see SIP methods similar to HTTP methods you will have SIP header similar to an HTTP header. Uh, now, the interesting part is that SIP can be transported, uh, you know, over TCP, UDP, or SCTP. Now, in this course, we are going to be primarily looking at TCP-based SIP. SIP can also be encrypted and sent over TLS. That's also something we'll be looking at. Now, as far as the second channel, which is the media channel, which contains all the VoIP, uh, you know, call data is concerned. Again, there are multiple options. The first is RTP, which uh, basically is real time transport protocol. Now in RTP, the key thing from a security perspective is the traffic is unencrypted. So which means that an eavesdropper can easily go ahead and listen to a VoIP call if he has access to RTP. Now, the secure big brother of RTP is SRTP, which is Secure Real-Time Transport Protocol. And this is actually encrypted, and we'll talk about this in great detail as well. Then you also have ZRTP, and this actually is, is something which deals more with the negotiation of you know, keys on a per session basis, etc. Okay, so how does it work? Now, in the in the most simplistic scenario, 
you have a VoIP client. So let's say you know you have one of these hard phones or soft phones, uh, which have a VoIP application on it, and then you have the VoIP server, such as an asterisk server. So these devices, including your laptops or any VoIP client, has to first register to the server uh, to tell that, hey, you know what, I am up and running and I am ready to accept and make calls. Now, this server is called the registrar. And for most of what we've kind of seen, you may actually find that all of this functionality of registrar uh, and the user agent server is kind of combined together in one single software. Okay, so here is a sample VoIP call. And we have two entities, Alice and Bob. Now, Alice would like to make a call, so it sends an invite. Uh, Alice sends an invite message. Now, one sample architecture could be there is a redirect server sitting in front of the actual uh, VoIP proxy. And the redirect server then tells Alice how to reach the VoIP proxy. Now, what I'd like to mention is there are many, many architectures possible. This proxy in turn can talk to a chain of proxies before finally getting to Bob. Now, as this is a traffic analysis course, all we care about is being able to receive traffic uh, from one of these tap points. And at the very least, we should be able to see the traffic from one endpoint to and fro. And typically, that should be sufficient combined with other techniques to go ahead and decrypt the traffic. Okay, so once Alice figures out the actual VoIP proxy server through the redirect server, uh, she forwards her invite to the proxy, which forwards it to Bob. And after that, pretty much, you know, Bob's device starts ringing. And all of this is actually sent back to Alice using, you know, 100 messages. So 100 for trying. 180 for ringing. These are all transient messages. And after Bob picks up, uh, actually Bob's application sends back a 200 OK to the proxy, which is relayed back to Alice. And Alice acknowledges saying, hey, you know what, I'm still available for the call, which is forwarded back to Bob. And then the actual voice data communication pipe is initiated, uh, where both of them end up having the call. And once the call is finished, by messages are sent. Uh, this is typically initiated from the endpoint client who hangs up the call. And once this is done, everything is torn down. So let's actually look at a sample call. I'm going to just give you a very brief look in this video. And the next video, we'll look at more details. So you should have the PCAP files downloadable from under this video. And I'm going to go inside uh, the subdirectory after you download and unzip it. And we'll go inside the SIP RTP directory. And there are you know three files. I'm actually going to open up the normal called two parties files with Wireshark. So this is a uh, VoIP call which has been captured between two parties and we have the proxy server in between. Now, interestingly, what we've done is we've ensured that we have captured traffic on both sides, right? Uh, this is really for teaching purposes so that you get a very, very clear idea of what is happening. Now, in the real world, you may only be able to capture one side and that is fine. But knowing what is really happening simultaneously on both sides just allows you to have a better understanding. Now, the best way really, I mean, even without looking at any of the packets, uh, is to click on telephony, and then to go to SIP flows. So as I mentioned, SIP is the signaling protocol. And we actually see that there are a bunch of flows in here. All we're going to do is select all of them and then click on flow sequence. So what this does is this is going to go ahead and create this extremely colorful looking diagram uh, called SIP flow diagram. If we scroll up. So what we see here is 192.168.20.130 is one of the IPs. Similarly, you have 132 and this is 20.1. 
So 130 is actually the server in between and 132 and 20.1 uh, are really the two clients who want to talk to each other. So as you can see initially, the first client, first wipe client actually registers with the server. Similarly, the second client also registers with the server. You can see the register messages here. And I'll talk about these messages in more detail in the next video. And after that, we see the invite message going from the left client to the server. And eventually this is forward, forwarded to the other client. And we can see the ringing and trying messages. And finally, we end up seeing RTP data being sent, right? We can actually see there is RTP data being sent here, uh, back and forth. And this contains the actual voice call. Now, once that is done, we can see the by messages was initiated by the right side caller by, and the communication gets toned down. And after that, typically both the phones once again re-register with the server, which also acts as the registrar, just to tell it that, hey, you know what, we are still available for other calls, right? So these SIP flow diagrams is actually going to be the greatest lifeline we can get. Uh, SIP is such a complicated protocol that if you started looking at it packet by packet, you'd go crazy. So I'm going to be relying heavily on these diagrams and then correlating this with interesting packets we see in the PCAP. So this is what I have in this introductory video. In the next video, we will look at how the registration process works for the SIP devices. That's all. If you're enjoying your time at Pentester Academy, please recommend us to your friends and colleagues. Thank you.